Hi there, my name is Kevin Davey, and you are listening to jazzlondonradio.com. This program is entitled Kevin Davey's Desemble, and over the next hour I'll be playing a mixture of jazz, improvisation, and other forms. Please stay with us. Hi there, this week's special guest on the show is the young emergent trumpeter Mark Kavuma, who has just released his new album entitled Kavuma. I will play excerpts from the new album and also the interview I did with him two days ago at the South Bank Centre in London. During the interview we touch on Mark's background, also his musical perspectives and plans for the future. Enjoy. Hi there, my name is Mark Kavuma. And you are listening to jazzlondonradio.com. Hi there, I'd just like to introduce uh, Mark Kavuma, uh, a significant and up and trumpet player uh, based in London of Ugandan and British heritage. Welcome, Mark. Hello. Greetings. Would you like to say something firstly about your background, uh, Ugandan, British heritage, uh -huh. and, and your formative years? Sure. Uh, well, I was born in Uganda, um, in Kampala, and I lived there up until I was nine years old, at which point I moved here and I've lived in South East London, Peckham, mainly I grew up um, since. Okay, cool. Um, and um, where were you educated? In terms, of um, in terms of schools, well, when I came here, I went to, I just, uh, Red Rift Primary School, which is in uh, Surrey Keys. Yes. Um, and then, from then on, I went to St. Thomas the Apostle, which okay. is in Peckham. Yes. Uh, that was my secondary school. Uh, sixth, form, sixth form, I went to Christ the King, which is in Lucian. And then for university, I went to Trinity College of Music, which is in Greenwich. So it's always been South London. Okay. And always been South London. Did you do a jazz degree at Trinity? I did a jazz degree, yeah. Okay. Uh, performance. Fantastic. And, mm -hmm. who, and who was the head of jazz there at the time? Uh, that was Simon Persson. Oh, okay. okay. Simon Persson. Super, super. Mm -hmm. Who would you consider as your significant mentors as you were learning music? Um, well, my first, well, my music teacher at uh, secondary school, the guy who got me playing trumpet, um, his name was Joe Morgan, and actually there's a track on the album dedicated to him, which is called Papa Joe. He was a significant part okay. of, uh, of my um, development. Well, he started me on trumpet. Yeah, great track, um, great track. Thank you. And then, from then on, I met Claude Depper, who was okay. a big, I mean, I heard Claude and I was like, all right, I'm going to be a trumpet player. <laughs> that was like a year into playing. Yeah. So Claude's definitely a very big mentor. Um, a fellow called Matt Fox. Matt Fox. Who started a group called Kinetica. Yes. Uh, Kinetica Blogger, where I met a lot of my friends I'm playing with, and it's been a big part of my, of my life. Um, then, of course, Gary Crosby, yes. who, um, very big mentor. He's been there throughout my whole development. Yes. Um, and then, of course, there's people like Musingi Brian Edwards, uh, yes. tennis yes. saxophone, he's on the album. Yes. He's a big, big mentor.
moving on then, mm -hmm. uh, after you graduated, uh -huh. what were your uh, next moves after that? Well, funnily enough, I just graduated. Uh, I just graduated um, last year. Yes. Because uh, I did two years, then I had a two-year break. Uh, well, two years touring. Yeah. Um, and then I went back to finish. So I just finished last year. Um, are you on a release from an independent label? or is it? Uh, uh, yeah, it's, I'm, on, I'm releasing Ubuntu, Ubuntu. which is uh, run by the great Martin Hummel. Okay. Um, and yeah, they, they put it out and they're in charge of it, yeah. Okay, and um, in terms of sales and uh, volume, mm -hmm. is it a significant amount, mo modest amount? So volume? far, yes. so far very good. So, so far, far I, good. I can't complain. It's only been out a month. It was out uh, June the 15th, a month and a bit. Uh, and very happy days. I mean, we had the album launch last week at Ghost Notes. That was sold out. Um, no, happy, happy days at okay. the moment. Okay. Would you say that uh, you are a post bop trumpet player? Or? Uh, <laughs> I mean, here we go. No, I mean, I don't really, I don't really think about it that deeply yeah. uh, in that sense. I don't think I categorize myself as a post bop because I play loads of different in loads of different bands. You know, my album's one thing, but I play in loads of different bands with different styles. You know, so yeah. I don't really think about it in that sense. So you actually cross genre in terms of or styles in terms of blowing and jazz yeah and in, yeah. in terms of you know cause for I've seen you on television doing the street blowing with uh, the street band Kinetica I've seen you on TV exactly <laughs> I think it was Jules Holland or something uh -huh. so I know that you're blowing across a spectrum of things mm -hmm. um, who is the most uh, this is a cliche but who is the most influ influential trumpet player to you of the greats of the greats wow well, that's always changing for me. Uh, there's, I go through, through phases. You know, there are times when I'm like, oh my God, Freddie Hubbard is the greatest thing yeah. ever. Yeah. And then I, there are times when I, put on Louis Armstrong, I hear a Louis Armstrong record, and I'm like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. And then you know, there are times I hear Miles Davis, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, so it's always yeah. changing. Yeah. At the moment, I'm going through a very big Kenny Doran phase. Kenny Doran. Um, that, but that's, you know, like I said, it's always changing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Bill Hardman, have you, have you been checking I've, any? I haven't, I haven't checked uh, a lot of Bill Hardman, but I have heard some stuff of him and Jackie McLean. Um, I've, I've heard some stuff, I haven't uh, checked out a lot of it, but I've heard some records. When I heard the first track on your album, Into mm -hmm. the Darkness, mm -hmm. to me you sounded like Charles Tolliver a lot there. Yeah? That's what I think, I thought. Oh, wow. I thought it was the intensity of a Charles Tolliver mm -hmm. in the phrasing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it's a strong album throughout. You've, I know you have a lot of great people on there with you, and uh, I, I personally noted that one. And then number three is uh, Madibo, mm -hmm. and there's some very strong playing there. The guitarist, Artizites, yeah, Artizites on Wonderful. there. That is very, very uh, stands out. But your blowing is incredible on all of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you've already mentioned Papa Joe. Yeah, you yeah, told yeah. Me the dedication. Um, Abad with me is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I listened to that also. I listened to the album a few times. Um, would you like to say something about the uh, the tap dancer on uh, on, uh, church? on church? Well, the on tap church. dancer that's uh, Michaela Marina Lerman. Yeah, uh, very beautiful human being, and she she's based in New York. Right. Um, but I, I know her because every time I go to New York. Uh, I stay at her place a lot of the time. She cooks for everyone and she kind of looks after everybody. So I kind of, I'm always at her place when I go to New York. Yes. But um, this particular time when we recorded the album, she was here because we were doing a show at the other Palace Theatre uh, called The Joint Is Jumping. Right, yeah. And so we did that for I think it was two weeks. And then at the end of that, I wanted to record this album. Um, but the only date we can get, because we're doing the show every day, right. was the weekend and we couldn't do the Saturday and I booked it on Sunday and they were leaving on Monday. So we had one day to kind of make it happen. And that's what you hear, but she's the tap dancer in church and uh, she's incredible.
like to ask you about the community of musicians, mm -hmm. um, which you uh, are very close to in London, mm -hmm. especially like around the Haggerston mm -hmm. and around the Ronnie Scott scene. Where, sure, where I've sure, play. sure. I mean, the guys at the Haggerston, I guess they've all been very um, influential in my playing, and you know, very big mentors. You've got, for instance, Alan Weeks, who's night it is and he's been doing it for a good little while now yeah. uh, he, and he was kind enough to bring me in the band because yeah. I used to go there when I was younger and check them out every Sunday um, you know hence the name church because we'd always uh, for that for that last tune of the album it's dedicated to the Haggerston you yes. know and yeah. we call it church because it would always be like oh you going to church today yeah. you going to church today because yeah. it was every Sunday night and um, Alan, I love Alan, and then you got Musingi, who I talked about yes, a little Musingi. bit earlier, yes. and he's like, you know, he's, he's probably my biggest influence because he's a great player, great player, great player strong guy. Uh, yeah. We call him the songbird because yeah. <laughs> you know he's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And then Shaney, Shaney Forbes, Shaney Forbes. Uh, yeah. he's great. He, me and him practice quite a lot, um, so he's a big part of my, um, yeah. of my sound. Um, so that's the Haggerston scene, and then of course you have. Uh, I do a night called uh, at the ba at the Prince of Wales in Brixton, yes, which is my band called the Banger Factory. Okay, and so you have a community there of like William Cleesby, who's on drums, um, uh, Masingi, Michael Shrimpling, and Artie Zeitz is yes. in the house band there. Yeah. Um, and that's every Thursday night and then of course you have the Ronnie's thing which is like Alex Garnett who's another great mentor of mine um, and all the different players that go through there you know Steve Brown, Steve Fishwick, Matt Fishwick yes. all the different people that walk through there yeah familiar familiar um, so yeah they're all very right. different scenes in a way but all very much a part of my development and my, yeah. my music yes know? yes and uh, what would you say is uh, your strategy going forward now? Going forward, well, now I'm, I'm going to, this my band, The Banger Factory, uh, I think that's the main emphasis. Yeah. We're going to record an, an album in September. Yes. Uh, I'm also going to be going on the road, hopefully, with this record, um, either later part of this year or beginning of next year. We're kind of just finalizing the, the details for that. Okay. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, I'm going to be recording another album pretty soon. Okay, great. Yeah. great. What would you say is your approach to composition? Um, that's a... I suppose how I've always approached it is um, a lot of my compositions are based on either people or places. So, you know, for instance, on the album, a lot of it is either people or places that uh, see for instance apart from Into the Darkness um, you've got Modibo who was a, a, a man I met on tour with the great Salif Keita okay he was a percussion player and uh, me and Brian were the horn players for this for this tour and we went out to Mali to rehearse we get there and we're like the, the British guys on the tour everyone was from you know Mali or yeah, yeah. from from that area so yeah. You know, we get in there, and a lot of their music is very much learned orally. Yes. But the MD went through the effort of writing us all these charts, all these horn lines, and yeah. each each tune had like six, seven pages, and it was just like a mess. Yeah. So Salif Kater came in the room. He heard us. He was like, "All right, now you guys go and sort this out, and then come back." You know. So yeah. Modibo who was a percussion player, he didn't speak a word of English, we didn't speak a word of the, his language, but he went through his way to make sure that we were comfortable yeah. and helped us learn the song, you know, okay. learn the songs and what they meant. Yeah. And I was hanging out with him throughout the whole tour, yeah. bearing in mind he didn't speak English and I didn't speak his language, we were just yes. hanging out, you know. Yes, yes. So he's, you know, that's kind of, a lot of my compositions are based on people or experiences I've had, you know. Um, Papa Joe said that was my music teacher. Abide with me. That's not my composition, but yeah, that's not my composition. But Church again is based on the Haggerston. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of. So they're inspired by real people. Real effect, yeah, exactly. And I tried to kind of, put, you know, capture that personal, how I see that person, you know, and their character through music. Yes. 
that's kind of my how, because a lot of my compositions are literally people's names. Yeah. A lot of them, you know. Okay, as a trumpet player, I can ask you what trumpet you use, because I've seen you use an old recording in Ronnie Scott's. Oh, Then I've wow. seen you pass through a few other different A few models. other different trumpets. That's right. I've seen you at Jazz Cafe with a different model. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I was a... Uh, well, I don't know if it was a blessing or a curse, but I used to work in Phil Parker's. Yes. Uh, and I love those guys. They're brilliant. But I was surrounded by trumpets. Yes all the time you know and I could never stick to one trumpet <laughs> I'll just be like be in the shop chilling and they were always very kind to me they were like yeah you know can you can try whatever you want go test it out for a few days if you and you know I don't know whether that was a blessing or curse because I'll test it out and I'm like this is the one this yeah, is the one I have to have this one and then you know a month later they're like oh Mark man this this thing just came in do you want to try it out I'm like this is the one I gotta have this one so I've changed a lot of trumpets but um, of recent, I've been playing on a BNS. Okay. Um, I love BNS trumpets. BNS and the shirts are company Germany. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I've been playing on those, and recently, about two weeks ago, actually, I got a new one. I got a new BNS okay. elaboration. It's yeah. beautiful. Okay. It's very beautiful. Okay. Super. Uh, on the mouthpiece side, mm -hmm. what what do you? I use, use a Monet uh, B2S3. B2S3. Yeah. Uh, would you have any advice for young uh, aspiring trumpet players? Yes, definitely. I'd say, um, well, A, hook up with other trumpet players. And like, I do this thing every Monday at my house. Uh, I get together with some trumpet players and we just play, you know, because it's, yeah. it's, it's good to kind of um, see how other people approach things and how other people, you know, and there's loads of trumpet players are on the scene at the moment you know yeah. especially young ones so I that's think right. I'd say right, yeah. hook up with some other trumpet players uh, join a band or a few bands for instance Kinetica I do Kinetica I've been doing Kinetica since I was 13 and that's where I've met a lot of the people that are on the scene now you know Ruben Fox Femi Colioso uh, Fion Cross went there Dominic um, the list is endless so many people have gone yeah. through this thing you know yeah. and something like that I, th I think is good because um you've got about 10 different trumpet players, you know? Um, and the emphasis is not on how good you are, but enjoying what you do, you know? Yeah. So I will definitely say to get involved in something like that. And then also go check out some, some trumpet players, but um, you know, go check out some gigs and yeah, hit okay. me up. <laughs> okay. okay, so I'd like to just say thank you to Mark Gavuma on behalf of jazzlondonradio.com and um, say go out and buy the album. Yeah, the album is entitled Kavuma.